Hey, listen to Commander Cookout Podcast, episode 303. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan. We're going to take a look at some gangsta-ass stuff. Now, hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Good. What is going down? Whole ton is going down. We're back at another miserable day in the oh. neighborhood here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. We got some stories to tell, some people to thank, some legends to review. But before we get to any of that, we have to thank our official business daddies, Fusion Gaming Online, the source for all your gaming needs. Very much so, yeah. Oh, there goes the pen. There goes the pen. Very much so. Before we get to any of that, I had to push the button, which I forgot to do. Yes. <laughs> Brand, where's, I'm sitting here waiting for Brando to talk. He goes, you gonna, you going to push the button? Push the button? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I pushed the button. That's my only job. <laughs> Did one job. <laughs> yeah, we're here. Big thanks to FusionGamingOnline.com. I have an order in for new Capenna stuff. Oh. Yes. Not... Uh, not including, but it is including booster packs for the stinky old onion bag Ooh. for for the booster pack game giveaway on the pre-show. Watch the pre-show every Monday on YouTube and subscribe. Hmm. That was a lot more polite than how you ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, legendary creatures, uh-huh. singles for painting on on the Facebook page every Thursday afternoon, uh-huh. and. Some for my own personal use. What? Yes, I bought cards for my own personal use. What? Guess how I did it. How'd you do it? By using CCO Spring promo code to save 5% oh. off my whole order. Off of shit that you were going to buy anyway? Yes. Wow. Yes. And I assume CCO Perks promo code also still available and you can combine it with CCO Spring and you yeah. can combine it with the deal of the week to max discount all of the stuff you're going to buy anyways. Very seems, good deal. Seems like a pretty decent uh, reason to go to FusionGamingOnline.com. Buy the cards you're going to buy anyway. Save yeah. some money and tell them that we're uh, we're pretty good guys helping them out. Dece. Dece. Dece or on Seven the rock. Seven out of ten, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seven mm-hmm. out of rock. What? Mm. That's. Ooh, we're going to talk about a rock tomorrow. Are we? Oh, yeah. There's a mana rock that I'm very excited about. Oh, cool. Costs yeah. Costs three. Yeah, no way. I know, oh, right? Man, Who I, knew? Oh, oh. So we're talking New Capenna this week. Some gangsta ass shit, as Brando says. Mm-hmm. We're, do, we're gonna do the legends today. We've got 37 first ever printed legends. Some good, some not as good. Some like they're cool, but like this. This is my Cole's notes review. Okay, peep this. Cole's notes review. Some of them on the surface totally sucky. Yeah, but if you dig and build around them, so gall dang like CEDH powerful. Wow. So they started kind of doing that in uh, Theros two. Sure. Uh, Theros Back from the Dead. What was it Beyond called? Death? Th- Ther- yeah, Theros Beyond Death. They started doing that then with like the, the Croxa and the Uro where it's like, oh, these are fine like at face value. But right. if you build around them, they're like CEDH combo killing machines, as I, as I say. Yes. And I love that design because... We're all the dragons from the... Whatchamacallisms. That uh, last set we talked about. I don't know. Kamigawa? Where they were just like, oh, go infinite, win the game. Oh, yeah, that's right. Go infinite, win the game, or just build Dragon Tribal. Yeah. And I love building jank decks. I think everybody in the nation yeah. knows that I build the worst deck in the room routinely mm-hmm. as a means to just play magic and not have all the baggage associated with playing <laughs> powerful decks. But if I wanted to, I could like, I could build a laser cannon and put it on a shark's head and kill somebody with it. Yeah, sharks are dope, man. I was yeah. playing Borderlands, Tiny Tina's Wonderland, and there's these sharks that are on the ground, and they swim in the dirt, and they jump at you like Jaws, and you blast them with a fucking crossbow that blows up. Yeah. Oh, man. All I heard was blasting and Tiny Tina. I'm not going to Google any of those words in the same sentence. Solid idea, yes. So... I, uh, I like the legends. So here's the thing. Me and Brando were talking before the show. I like a bunch of the legendary creatures, and several of them have inspired me to build new decks. Brando says, eh, eh. I'm going to put some of them in decks that I already have because I good. think that they're on brand and on theme, but overall I'm not looking to build another deck out of, out of this, this set. But cards in the 99. Hell yeah. There's a few of those, and that's pretty cool. I Very like cool. So over the next two days, Commander Cookout, we're going to be talking everything new Capenna, Today, legendary creatures. Tomorrow, not set review, more of 
what we like review. Yeah, our mm-hmm. feelings. We're going to talk feelings. We're going to be FCCO, <laughs> which which sounds appropriate because it's got an F in it. Yes, I like that. I okay. like that a lot. Yeah. Okay, so w- where do you want to start with with the with the legend? Now, preface. Preface. You know, I like the preface. Okay. Uh, or the prologue, if you will. Okay. Wait, hang. Are we actually just going to start talking about cards? Yes. Wow. Yeah, well, in, in a minute. In a minute. Yeah. We're gonna we're preface. Let, let, let's let's check the show notes. <laughs> we got show notes for a reason. <laughs> let's check the old showy noties. Preface. Preface. Okay. So here we go. I don't know if we need to go into in depth what the new abilities are. No. Our listeners are smart people. They've watched either other set reviews by this time or they've gone to Watsy's official website, they've seen on Twitter or Reddit or wherever you get your magic jargon, wherever you intake magic, you know like casualty and and connive and hideaway, which they changed. We'll mention and maybe we'll read the reminder text once, but after that, fuck, you're on your own. Yeah, or Blitz. Blitz, which, yeah. Blitz is the shits. <laughs> <laughs> Although a bunch of those cards are going to go directly into your bloodstream because they're all gruel cards. Well, that too. But the Obeka? Yep. The, the time oh, chronologist? And, and the turn? Yeah, yeah I can yeah. blitz them and then keep them? Yeah. One of my criticisms will be discussed of the new abilities tomorrow. Excellent. And we'll just discuss the new abilities yeah. today. And I'm going to summarize what he's going to say tomorrow. They kind of suck. Oh, so uh, Cole's spoiler, notes. Cole's notes. There's a summary for you. Uh, we'll, suck as in they're not, like, they're not inspiring. They're, they're not very powerful. Yeah. They're not very inspiring, like creature fall and like. Uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll talk okay. about it tomorrow. Talk. Yeah. Last thing I want to say. This is the podcast biznatch. Okay. Oh, Business, yeah. okay. if you will. That big thing that we ordered. Uh uh-huh. The the tracking says it's 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 coming. Oh, it should have been here yesterday, but I live in the middle of a field, so. Shit. They couldn't see my house on top of a hill, I guess. It was very cloudy and misty and just dismal yesterday. Yeah, not very good working conditions if you're a delivery driver sitting inside a vehicle all day, I guess. Yeah, or anybody, really. I sit near a big a big window and I was looking outside and thinking, man, it's so dreary outside today. Oh, that doesn't sound like podcast business. We're, this is supposed to be the hype portion of the show. We are hyping the it hype, up. yes. Subscribe <laughs> on YouTube, you fucks. <laughs> you made me cough. The thing that we ordered. Oh, right, yeah. It's exciting. Members of the nation on our Discord are helping us out with the design work, but mm-hmm. it's at a standstill till I get the thing. Now. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. So, so they can do the mock ups and stuff and do all their graphic design y stuff. Oh, yeah. Which is super cool. If you want to become a patron supporter, you can help with that kind of stuff. You can help us pick our top five in fives, of which we just launched one last week. Go and watch it. They're lots of fun. Mm hmm. And it's never been a better time to become a patron because you get your name featured in our new credits. And wow, Magic Fests are starting again. Yes. That means we're going to have the CCO experience. Oh, shit. Which is super fun. Yes. Yes. It's the best experience. It's yes. the experience everybody wants to have, even if it's not with us. Yes. And we're going to show you how to do oh, it. Yeah. Editor Tyler, he messaged me, hey, he's like, okay, if there's going to be a CCO penthouse in Vegas, I'm totally in. I was like... I didn't message this to him, but I was thinking, Tyler, we're going to need you there because you're going to have to film a bunch of shit for us. <laughs> <laughs> so all that's great stuff. All of it's going to be great content coming out. All of it's great on the Discord if you want to become a patron. Links are in the show. Joe puts them on the screen. It's a whole thing. So Yes, and we'll see you all in these places because we're going to go to as many of them as we can and meet as many of you as we can because that's exciting stuff and now that the world is kind of opened back up for us a little bit we're going to take advantage of that by doing all the shit that we wanted to do before this all happened now yeah and you know what uh, like the the things that we're looking at Vegas I think Vegas is a given yeah and get this it's only like a two day event that's bullshit. so all the Vegasing needs to be packed into 33% less days or we could just stay an extra day no we gotta pack more into the same amount of space sure. ooh don't Google that. Well, I mean, got to pack more beer. I got to find more places to put beer inside of me. Yeah, let's see. That's a that's yeah. a that is life a, goal. Yes, that's um, uh, uh, an optimistic yes. kind of outlook on 
getting right. drunk. Yes. If that's not nothing to be optimistic about, <laughs> as it were. Uh, in addition to that, we're looking at Bellevue, which is like Seattle for people who aren't familiar, I guess. But it's not because people from Seattle and Bellevue, they're like snobs and they... We've been talking about it and I'm still confused as to what exactly Bellevue is. Well, I always thought it was a mental hospital. It's besides Seattle. Sure. Yeah, maybe we'll see like Eddie Vedder and stuff. I don't know who that is. He's the singer for Pearl Jam, lives in Seattle. Okay. Maybe we'll see him. Probably, Probably not, not, though. Like, yeah. f- lots of people, I think, live in Seattle. Eh? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, how big can it be? <laughs> a pretty big. <laughs> and then also we're looking at the, the regional qualifier for, like, Western Canada, which is in Calgary on June 25th. So we're looking at that as well. And when we hear more about the ones that are happening in, like, the fall and winter, maybe we'll hit some of those. Yeah, too. why did they condense everything into freaking two months they condense it they just announced these ones and then they're going to announce more and more and more don't do that nobody can plan yeah this makes it impossible to plan and book holidays and shit mm-hmm. i've got to get a babysitter <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is serious man serious business yes speaking of business cards we should talk about them yes where do you want to start we're going to start i'm with, taking my sweater off we're going to start with analo the painter oh uh, yeah analo He's a 1-3 for Grixis. Vampire ass assin with Death Touch. The first instant or sorcery spell you pl- you cast each turn has casualty 2. That means you can sack a creature with power 2 or more and copy the instant slash sorcery spell. You called him Analo? I called him... I, I want to call him a Geho. I, I, I want to call him Inyeho, like Inyeho Tequila. He kind of looks like he's had some tequila. Oh, for sure, yeah. Come on, look at him. He's definitely stumbling. Some some of that aged blood tequila, though, because he's a vampire. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, some of that aged stuff. It's kind of like dark red. You know what bugs me? In New Capenna, Grixis got more vampires, Mm. right? There's more vampires. And you know what there isn't any of on Capenna, and there definitely should be? Goblins. And we're going to talk more about that tomorrow. That was a criticism that I've seen is no goblins. Because there are some goblin-ass cards that just... Aren't goblins. But we're going to get into that tomorrow. What do you think of Angelo the Painter? I personally think it's just another Is It Spellslinger commander with black in it. That's Ooh. what I think. Yeah, the the sacrifice your dude to copy a spell is a is a feels black, yeah. right? But but copy a spell is is it? So yeah. I think the combination of those three colors is appropriate. Yes. If this guy was like a a Mardu vampire, like with white in it, you'd say, "What the heck? What the what the what, what the, the ass? Well, it'd be like sack a dude to make two tokens or some crap. Yeah, like gain two life. <laughs> <laughs> gain two life to gain two life. Ooh, Ooh. goes infinite. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this guy's good. This guy's good. I think. I think he's good. Like baseline, fine. He's vampire. Put him in your Grixis vampire deck. Or are you ever going to remember the new names? No. of the families. No. Is that going to be a thing that we have to do no. going forward? No. Like like all the tryhards no. that are that are like, "Oh, Boros is Lorehold now." No. No, it's it's Grixis still. Is that is that what we're going to do? Yes. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm going to try throughout these two episodes to no, to just say what it is, but I'm going to call it Grixis, D- right? What what I'm going to say what it is. I'm just going to it's going to be an uh, an exercise of thought. Oh, okay. okay. I, didn't, I didn't even take the time to commit the things into my brain. I forgot they existed until you mentioned them. Yeah. It's like, yeah, look at this. Crime boss, and... crime boss family names. Yeah, they're stupid. <laughs> Man. This guy's good. I think he goes into the Grixis vampire deck. I also think that you could probably build something pretty sweet that when you sacrifice a dude, you get him back and you can copy your like instance well, you, every time. You play like Butt Gasp, and then every turn you can just play a land, copy your thing. Yeah. Play, learn, copy, right? Like it's, and then you play it with a bunch of extra turns and extra combats and then creatures that make you win and then you win. There's your deck. Oh, yeah. I, f- I forgot. I forgot about the extra turns and yeah. extra combats thing because yeah. I think there's going to be a couple of those where it's like, hey, extra combats and this guy's good. Yeah. Easy as pie. Next up, we have Benny Brax, zoologist. He is a 3 2 oh. elf druid. There's elves in this fucking thing too. No goblins. White three for a convoking. That means you can tap creatures to help pay for them at the beginning of each end step. If you created a token this turn, draw a card. There we go. A white card that says draw a card on hey, it. Everybody's dude. excited. Everybody's rock hard. It should be mentioned the first three things we're talking about all from the commander product. We're going to do all of them together. Yeah, That's yes. why we got 37 of them when yeah. when everybody's like, no, there's not 30. Anyways. There's 37. Convoke is is 
I guess back. Yeah. They can do whatever in Commander products. Yeah, they can right? do whatever they want. Yeah. So your dudes help you pay for this. Yep. So he wants to go in dude decks, which yep. is already what you're going to want to do in white. Yep. And at the beginning of your end step, if you created a token, draw a card. So he wants to go in a token deck, or that's Celestia, or in this case, probably Naya. Yeah, you know what? At the Commander Nukapena pre-release thing, where we all play pre-cons, mm -hmm. I'm going to play the deck that he's in, but I forgot that when I ordered my <laughs> singles yesterday because I bought the other two commanders that lead this deck, so I'm going to have multiple copies of them. Paint them. <laughs> I guess I could paint them. If... Yeah. Or do this guy's good. He's, he's good, right? He, he's he's like tokens and card draw and put them in yeah. your tokens and card draw deck. Yeah. I don't think he's going to lead any decks, no, though, is he? You, you could. I mean, white does make tokens and stuff but i mean yeah. i think he's better in the 99 as well i think he'd be yeah a, put yeah. him put him in your your whenever you take damage make that many token deck uh, uh bu, bu, darian 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 put him in your tokens put him in your selesnia decks put him in there moving in on selesnia decks speaking of selesnia decks yes here's one bess the soul nourisher is a one one human citizen for selesnia and one Whenever one or more other creatures with base power and toughness 1-1 one, one, enter the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on best soul nourisher. Whenever best attacks each other creature you control with base power and toughness 1-1, one, one, get XX, where X is the number of plus one, plus one counters on her. Jeepers creepers. Uh, yeah, yeah. So whenever you play a 1-1, one, one, she gets bigger. And then whenever she attacks, all your 1-1s one, get big equal to her bigliness. Notice it's one or more. Uh -huh. So like you're playing her in a Naya deck, so you have Krenko, and then uh. you tap your Krenko to make 18 goblins. She only gets one. Mm. That's why you need to have multiple instances of make dude dot yes. card yes. or ability. I'm so, not sure she's going to be a real, you think? No, I, doubt I don't highly. think so. But again, like with anything, it's a triggered ability. If you can find some way to farm that with, yeah. with synergies or combos, it's going to be real awesome when that little girl in the art behind her is just a massive fucking huge mutant. <laughs> Looks like that red hairy thing from Looney Tunes. <laughs> oh, when the when the when the bird turns into like oh, Frankenbird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah that's oh. gonna happen. And that's the only thing I thought of regarding this card. Because I, I'm not a huge Selesnya player. I don't think you are no. either. Mm -mm. I don't like the one one thing. I don't like the token thing. But here I am. One of the new decks I'm making is going to be like Saperling, like Naya Saperling tokens. Oh, so. saps. I love saps. I love saps too because they're cute little bug plant things. And and you can make like a million of them. Yeah. Not just like, ooh, I'll make my five soldiers. I'll make two citizens. I'll make three cats. I'll make one beast. And that's my token deck. No, I'm going to make a million bugs. <laughs> right? It's like. Yes. I don't know. If I'm in, I'm all in, I guess. Moving on. Moving on. We have another vampire, this time a rogue. It's Cormella the Glamour Thief. It's Grixis and one for a 2-4 with haste. One tap, add Grixis. Spend this mana only to cast instant and or sorcery spells. When she dies, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Mm. This is one of the ones that's subtly good. Yes. Mella is money. Yes, I went Mella there. Is, you get, I totally, you get I out totally of here. went there, yeah. You. Joe, Joe, if he's if editor Joe isn't a wrestling fan, he's gonna Google Mella is money, and it's gonna be Carmella. Yeah, he's gonna know. Yeah. So he's I gonna listen to a bunch of clips of Corey Graves just beating off on commentary, and it's just oh, does he do that still? Yes. Come on, because they're touching tips in real life. Yeah. And there's well, nothing wrong with that. Is, but I don't she wanna... is attractive. She's you think fine. So? She's fine. Yeah. I don't know. Nah. She's not my type of. She's a WWE superstar for anybody who is unaware. Oh yeah, I suppose that's important. So this is another kind of. Spelly casty vampire thing on the surface. Yes. And she got haste. And if you can sacrifice her and bring her back with one of those, like, when it dies, bring it back to the battlefield cards. Yeah. You can just recast that when it dies, bring it back to the battlefield card over and over and over and over and over again. Cause you always get that card back to your hand and you cast it again with the, her, with her shit. You just gotta like sacrifice her to like an Ashnod's altar, which okay, so Ashnod's altar. Yeah, but yeah, but that's how you go infinite with this and and like the Malakir rebirth type cards. Yeah, and you just make infinite blue and infinite red. That's this one not very powerful, but if you build around it, it's like holy fuck, you could do that like on turn four. There you go. Right. So we've got another that. Uh, moving on. <laughs> moving on, we, baby. We, we're Look building at this next fast. Guy. Look at this next guy. Look at him. Oh, read him. Read his creature type. <laughs> read it. Okay. A cat advisor. Yes, he's an advisor. Uh, Drenny Clin, editor-in-chief. So he works for the newspaper. He's a 2-2 for Azorius and 2. 
when he comes into play, or he comes into play with a choice, your choice of a plus one, plus one, first one, or vigilance counter, whatever a non-token creature you control ETBs. If it has counter on it, you can put the same number and kind of counters on that creature. Oh. So, like, if you have shield counters and a bunch of plus one, plus ones, and a trample counter, when you have a non-token bro come in, it gets all those two. A shield, a bunch of plus ones, and a trample counter. Yes. He's spreading propaganda. That's what he's doing. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, he's deciding what the fuck is in the newspaper. Yeah. What What do you want to learn about today? Trample? All right, trample it is. Everybody has trample. Everybody's now. trample. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want pictures of trample. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's him. That's him. Oh man, S- look at his stupid head. Too. Like, <laughs> look at his, he's, got his, he's got a haircut and he's got big ears. Yeah, he's and kind he's of like. A, is it a, a Azorius counters deck? Hey, that sounds pretty CCO to me. It does, but like, is that like you? You think? Nope. You think? Advisor tribal. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just it kind of is doing something contrary to what the color identities sort of do. So I mean, I don't know how much mileage you're gonna get out of this yeah. without having to dig pretty deep the, into the, the well. Magi- and the magic purists are gonna say, I don't know if that's in the color pie for those colors. Yeah, and I I mean, first sure. strike and vigilance are in the color pie for those colors. Sure. But doing the thing with counters, is that is that a thing that, that the color pie cares about? Is who gets counters? I mean maybe. Probably. We'd ask Laura that. She'd know. Yeah. She Laura knows all that stuff. But we don't. And I don't know. I'd think that this deck will be built and I think it'll be kind of fun. But I figure there's gonna be maybe one of them at this point. Well you know the- you know what you do? I think you just you, you pr- proliferate den denry? Denry Clin? Yeah. What a, oh man. Ugh. Stupid. Name. Denry Clin? Yeah. That's dirty yeah. sounding. Mm-hmm. You proliferate them, then you can share when you got when you do the ETB thing, right? Sure. So you can give people lots of first strike counters. Yeah. Well, you'd probably do it with plus ones, hey? <laughs> well, then you might as well just play green and white and do it better. Well, I suppose. Right? You play Abzan and just do but, it better. But maybe you want to play blue. Now this this card gives you the opportunity. Plus it's a cat, which isn't worth nothing. Plus it gives you cat in blue, which yeah, is a yeah. new thing. And if you want to play cat, you could also play green. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, well, we'll have to see if there's any white and green and blue legendary creatures coming up. Or more advisors, of which there are both. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Arant, street artist. She is a human rogue 03 for a blue with flash, defender, and haste. And, and, blue on tap, copy target spell you control that wasn't cast. Oh, cool. So basically, this is uh, two things. This is because it's got flash and haste. You can go blue, blue, one, copy a spell that's already been copied, is what this card does. Plus, gives you an ETB on top of that, right? Yeah. Also, Errant street artist? Does that just mean like errant street artist? Like yes. you can't get is that a play on words? I think so. Did we get there? I think we did. Did we just English them? This is Banksy. This is Banksy? Magic Banksy. He's the street artist. He spray yes. paints things. Yes. Yeah. But I don't know. Like it does what Ryan says it does. I wish it goes that... in your spell copy. Are you gonna play it in uh, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs? I was just opening my mouth to say. It doesn't have any power, so it can't crew vehicles. <laughs> so, no, I'm not. Yeah, me- Ultra meme value, though, if I did, because it can't crew vehicles, but it can. It just doesn't do anything when it does. Yeah. So it, like, gets in the driver's seat, and, like, Calamax is driving this train, and Errant Street Artist has just got her hand out the window with a spray bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. I'm not. Excellent. Let's go to Evelyn the Covetous, another Grixis vampire rogue, this time for Rakdos Hybrid, Dimir Hybrid, Black 2. <laughs> Got there. 2 5 with Flash. Holy shit, there's a novel on here. Whenever it or another vampire comes into play under your control, exile the top card of each player's library with a collection counter on it. Uh-huh. Once each turn, you may. Play a card from exile with a collection counter on it if it was exiled by an ability you controlled, and you may spend mana as or any color to cast it. This one looks terrible. No, it doesn't. Are you kidding me? This one is kind of like a tolly, but you got to spend money or mana to cast it. But if you 
ETB creatures like crazy, you can mill your opponents. You can mill yourself too. And then you can cast whatever you mill from yourself, like a Thassa's Oracle. We'll also put the asterisk. If you can go infinite, you immediately win the game. Yes. Like with a... With, it, with anything. Yeah. It yeah. d- doesn't matter what you go infinite with. Yeah. This is just random vampire rogue that's going to like air quotes draw you cards yeah but also if you go infinite you can win the game and it's got flash so if you go infinite and somebody kills your thing and you continue to go infinite <laughs> and make mana while going infinite like with a world gorger dragon yeah you just play her again yeah <laughs> just play her again and win <laughs> yeah. so uh, Dang. i mean you, that's what she does that's what she does if you're not going to go infinite and do that stuff you're going to Put her in your vamp, your Demir yeah. vampire spellcasty deck, and she's gonna do Demir spellcasty stuff. I guess <sighs> more is it with black is what we have here. Uh, yeah, kind of feels like that, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Remember earlier do, when if, I said if, Meh. if you don't if you don't go infinite with with her, do you do you play this card? Is there other better ETB abilities or payoffs or better card draw? I think there probably is. Yeah. But this is a vampire with flash, and it's a rogue for your party decks. Yeah. So, like, I mean, it's got it's got other things going for it. Do you think they just they just threw a little bit of everything in? Hey, fucking ketchup, mustard, relish, vampire, rogue, flash. Yeah. Fuck, there you go. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I think. Actually. And they're like, oh man, Jesus, this hot dog actually is powerful. There's a lot going it's on a on this powerful hot dog. wiener. Don't Google that. <laughs> Moving on, we're going pretty fast. Falco Sparrow, what the. Falco Spara Pact Weaver. Yeah, this Did almost it. sounds like Rock Me Amadeus. Falco, remember? 19, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Bant? Yes. This is Bant. Bant and one for, for a 3-3 three, three flying trampling bird demon enters the battlefield with a shield counter on it. A shield is if the creature would die or take damage and it has a shield counter on it, you take a shield counter off instead. That's like Totem Armor or Umbra. Yes. Umbra? No. Totem armor. Totem armor. Yes. Yes. Oh, Umbra was is the word that they gave totem armor on the on the enchantments that gave totem yes. armor. Yeah. She has my favorite ability in all of magic, which is you may look at the top card of your library at any time. Yep. So this card is immediately good. You may cast spells from the top of your library by removing a counter from a creature you control in addition to paying their other costs. That's pretty good. That's pretty good if you have things that like ETB with counters. Or if you're playing Denry Clin. <laughs> and you can just like flicker or bounce a creature and move one of his counters onto the creature, then you can always remove counters. Or if you're playing Devoted Druid, tap for a mana, remove that minus <laughs> counter, and, and get this. Okay, here's the deck. Here's the deck if we're building decks today. Okay. Every single thing in the Falco Spara deck, all, every single card costs one green. <laughs> <laughs> it's Elf Ball. Elf ball, elf ball, elf ball, elf ball. You know what costs one green? Concordant crossroads. Elf yeah. ball, elf ball, elf ball, elf ball. Just kidding, crater hoof. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the deck. Yeah, that's got to be it. We right? we we did it. We we got there. Or 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 the thing that doesn't cost one green is Thassa's Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of fetch lands in there. Like, boom! You can shuffle lands out of the way. Flawless, flawless. All right. So we're moving along. We got what is this? Gaida, Gaida, Gita, Font of Hope. Uh, yeah. Do you think five color mono white angel Aaron has an erection knowing that this card exists? Oh, hundred percent. And and is it is it Jada Jada? It depends on whether you think that the crime families in Capenna are Italian or not. Are t- Italian <laughs> or Spanish? Because in in Italian, like Jada is Jade. Uh, yeah. That's Jade, and that is a name. But her wings are blue, not green. Jade is usually a green, green, semi-precious stone, right? Yes. And it's like, it's like Giada or whatever in Spain. Like it's it's almost the same, but there it that isn't Jade in Spanish. So I'm Angel, not, Angel, two yeah. two <laughs> for white one, flying vigilance. Each other angel you control comes into play with a plus one plus one counter on it for each angel you already control. Dang. And, and it only costs two. Two and it has tap, get a white, and you can use that only to to play angel spells. That's pretty. Cool That's a card. really good card. That's a cool card. This is one of the cards that inspired me. Finally pushed me over the edge. Member, member, and member because on Twitter and Discord I've been asking like, who should I build mono white? Who should it be? Who should it be? This is gonna be it. Are you gonna build angel tribal? N- no, 
Oh. No, and I'm not sure if this is actually going to be it or if this is going to be the 99 or if I'm just going to paint the one that I ordered. <laughs> <laughs> but this this did push me over the edge because I was like, whoa, I could make Angel Tribal and just play like Angel of Mercy and other white life gain cards <laughs> and just do like stupid noob crazy gain life if you were to gain life gain twice that many life etb blink flicker flicker wisp momentary blink mar, 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 mar. right and do the white blinky thing and then just gun guys down with ether flux <laughs> reservoir <laughs> it's like pay 50 hmm pay 50 hmm pay 50 <laughs> i win <laughs> that, i, I want to build that you know what i like about this card is that it's one of those things that's like when you play something that's big it gets bigger yep. card that doesn't cost more than the big thing mm. you know what i mean like when you look at cards like uh cathar's o- crusade costs five yeah, or oketra maybe the the one that makes a four four every time you play a creature mm. but it, she costs you know what i mean like yes. you, you're already at your top end when you play your like all your little guys are already gone so all the values kinda... yeah yeah you know what uh, i i ran into exactly that in this white deck that i'm pulling cards for it's like whenever a creature attacks gain one life that's probably going to gain you a good amount of life in commander because lots of people attack Mm -hmm. but the effects that do that are five mana on an enchantment and six mana on a creature that has fox offering and some foxes gain you life so it's not all going to be angels (laughs) (laughs) but uh uh that's that's the deck i'm building (laughs) pretty cool pre-release well sealed commander you have to play the ones out of the box. This is the one that I would probably play, even though I super dislike this card. This is going to be your boy. This is the one that just because gonna... you want the Jun deck. That's right. The Riveteers has... deck got there. What? That's that's them. What? That's them. Get out of They're town. They're like iron workers, man. They're blue collar. They're the good guys. They're the guys you want to have drinks with. Oh, so they're us. Or or the, or they'll beat you up. They're us. <laughs> that is excellent. <laughs> Henzi Toolbox Tory or Henzi Toolbox Tory. Or just Tor. Or just Toolbox. He costs Jund for a 3-3 Devil Rogue. Hey, got to get them party types in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard as hell. Each creature spell you cast with mana value 4 or greater has Blitz, and Blitz is equal to its mana cost. So to Blitz something, you pay its Blitz cost, put it into play, it has haste, it dies at the beginning of the next end step, and when it eats shit, you draw a card. Yes. That's what Blitz does. So it important, gives all them- important to know, oh sorry, important to know that if it dies in any way, shape, or form, you draw the card. Yes. Not just it dies as a result of sacrificing it to the delayed Blitz triggered ability. Correct. So if you sacrifice it to whatever, Ashnod's Altar, you still get to draw the card. It also has blitz costs you pay cost one less for each time you've played your commander from the command zone this game. Ooh, each creature spell with converted mana value four or greater has blitz. So when you play him okay. for the first time, you can play your, you can hasty sneak attack. You can sneak attack the dudes from your hand yes. for three, essentially. Yes. Or one less than their casting cost. It's It's okay, I just... I don't know. I don't think Blitz is that good, and a Blitz tribal deck I don't think is that amazing. I got you. I got you. Infinite mana. <laughs> <laughs> you cast Henzi an infinite number of times, so all the stuff that you Blitz is free. Well, except for the colored mana. Oh, no, no. You just play artifact creatures. Oh, okay, sure. You just play artifact creatures, and then just continuously sacrifice them and then recast them in some way, shape, or form. Does something let us cast cards from our graveyard over and over again? In red? No. Or or black? <laughs> no. I mean, underwear breach exists, I guess, but who would ever play that in a deck? That's stupid. That's a stupid card. Nobody plays it. It's really bad. Can I I can't blitz from I can't blitz from underwear breach though. I got to no. I got to escape them. Yeah. Dang it. Hmm. Yeah. How There's got to be something you can do with this, but I haven't thought about it enough yet. Oh, there are certainly things. I mean, again, in the infinite world, there's a bazillion things you can do with this. You could do the thing where you use those enchantments that cycle creatures from your hand into your graveyard and like, like kill them with the blitz and get them back. And can I can yeah, I there's get a whole back a bunch of stuff you can do with this? Can I get back an infinite number of times an eater of days, and then just skip all my turns and deck my opponents that way? <laughs> can I do that? Yeah, there's got to be a way. Got to be a way for me to just take no t- like I'm checked out from playing magic. You guys play until you die, <laughs> but I'm not taking any turns ever. 
Man, but, I can't, but you have to make sure that you can't lose. Man, you know what we have to build now? What is it? We have to build the deck where we do that exact thing and then Tef's protection. Oh. And then, oh, then we oh. can't lose. We can't lose. I got it. I got it. Leveler, over and over and over and over again. If, I don't know how much Leveler costs. One? I don't know. Anyways, you cast Leveler, exile your whole library, and then you Eater of Days yourself a hundred times in a row, so you skip your next 200 turns, you never mill yourself. Mm -hmm. How do we not die, though? Test protection. Yeah, but we can't in this deck. Well, not in this deck, but, I mean, I don't uh, that's know. A, that's a fun exercise to do, hey? Well, come on. We'll How do I not with... die to Leveler and Eater of Days? We'll come up with something. <laughs> You'll see. And moving on to our Buy a Box promo, I believe. Yeah. In Jaxus the Troublemaker. This is a cool card. Human Warrior 2-3, Red 3, Red Tap, discard a card, create a token that's a copy of another target creature you control that gains haste, and when this creature dies, draw a card, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step, activate only as a sorcery, and it has Blitz 2. So, Blitz gives it haste, so you yep. go Red 1, Blitz it into play, Red Tap, discard a card, get a token copy of... Whoever. Fucking... Malignus, fling, fling, in uh, in Brian Stoutarm. <laughs> that's, that's where it's at. This is going straight into my Brian Stoutarm deck. Nice. Yeah. So a legend in the ninety nine, I think, is where this goes. Right? I'm going to put this into my Obeka deck because because blitz. blitz and gives yes. blitz, and I can make tokens that I can keep forever with Obeka. Yes, and I like my favorite thing about Blitz is the draw card when it dies mm -hmm. because. We've already discussed a couple different Blitz things where we care about getting the card back that we sacrificed, mm -hmm. thereby turning it into like value and card replacement. Mm -hmm. And this is a good ability. It, it lets you break the rule of commander where you can copy something and run two of things. Yeah. And uh, I play lots of like threat and effects, steal your guy and Bryon. So I steal your biggest guy if I don't have a big guy. Copy him. Copy him, fling him at you. Uh, fling the original at you, and then and then a s swing with the we'll one with haste or whatever. We'll smack your lips off with the other one, and then draw a card. And then draw a card. Yeah, yeah. I like all of those things it's in pretty. in a Boros deck. And it's got cool art on it too. I like that. I like the picture. Yeah, and it's the bio box promo or or the uh, the the promotional. Maybe it's the full art. I I don't know. I don't There's know. another picture that's similar, kind of like fighty boxy stance with like suspenders and shit. It's pretty P cool. Picturesque. Yeah, it, yeah. it sums up what the. Um, what the feel of the set is, right? Mm -hmm. What the Riveteers are like. The what? <laughs> the what? Let's move on to the next Naya commander. Oh, baby. It's a cat demon. Jermir Nexus of Revels. That Jetmir. Sounds... You don't tell me how to <laughs> say names. I tell you how to say names. <laughs> Five, four for Naya and one. Creatures you control get plus one, plus zero oh, and have vigilance as long as you control three or more creatures. Creatures you control get plus one, plus zero oh, and have trample as long as you control six or more creatures. Creatures you control get plus one, plus zero oh, and have double strike as long as you control nine or more creatures. So if you got nine creech, like, I don't know, like nine sapperlings. Yeah, like not like a Naya deck would. They have plus three, plus zero, oh, trample, vigilance, double strike. Yes. Three, six, nine. Damn you, fine. <laughs> Time get low, yeah. Little little get out. You leave. I'm gonna do the rest of this by myself. Little John, you leave, right? Little John, yeah. Why are you still here? Still saying things. Get low, get low, get low. I hate this. To this the is... window. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Naya token. Do really good stuff with your Naya token. That's deck commander. that's my boy. That's who I'm building. That's my Sapperling deck builder. Yeah, and you build a token deck. And it's really good. Yes. That's what that's what that card is. Let's move on to Ginny Faye. Goes Jet in the Mere's exact second. same deck. Yes. Jetmere's second. It, it tells you already what it's doing. This is an elf druid 3-3 three, three for John Celestia 3. <laughs> <laughs> John hybrid, Celestia hybrid. Of note, like in Port Green, you, you, you could cast that for green, 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 hey? Yes. That's pretty cool. Yes. If you would create one or more tokens, you instead create that many 2-2 two, two green cats with haste or that many 3-1 dogs with vig. Oh, man. Okay, so create 100 sapperlings, mm -hmm. and they all get vigilance, trample, and double strike with Jetmere. Yeah. And then Ginny Faye's like, no, just kidding. They have haste, and yeah, they're, they're actually twice as big. Yeah, they're actually 2-2s two with haste. So man. 5-2s with Haste, Vigilance, Trample, and Double Strike. If I ever wanted two dudes to have partner, <laughs> that's them. <laughs> that's, they're going to be both in the deck I'm building. So we've established what that is. Moving on to Jolene the Plunder Queen. Jolene the Plunder Queen. <laughs> She's oh, man. Jolene, Jolene. <laughs> <laughs> she is a 
Two two human warrior for green red two. Whenever a player attacks one or more of your opponents, that the attacking player gets a treasure token. If you would create one or more treasure tokens instead, of create that many tokens plus one. Sacrifice a treasure. Fa- sacrifice five treasures. Put five plus one plus one counters on Jolene. 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 Looks like Becky Lynch. That's Very our much. second wrestler, isn't it? Very much so. Yes. Yeah. I was thinking that too. I didn't. I wasn't going to say nothing, but yeah. That's okay. Becky Becky Lynch Lynch is, um, well, the name Becky Lynch, definitely trademarked to WWE, but uh, we can say it. Yeah, we can. Because we're not selling it. That's right. Yes, that's how trademark law works. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of cool. Gets an extra treasure. She goes in the John treasure deck that they built you in this set. Yes. Uh, Maybe at the front of it, maybe in the middle of it. Maybe plundering the butt of it. Yeah. Because she is the butt plunder queen. That's right. Uh... I. That's it, where you put her. It, That's what you do with her. Is there any? That's it. Is there anything that we can say about sacrificing like twenty treasures to give her like plus twenty plus twenty and just one shot somebody? Is that available if she's your commander just in gruel colors? Yeah. Could could we do that? Yeah. How do we make that many treasures? Dockside extortionist. Ooh. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Docks, go. Dockside and Teamer Sabretooth, just infinite treasures. Well, then what are you doing with Voltron <laughs> damage if you're doing that? <laughs> just like play a, like a burn spell or something. We'll just play Dockside and just do it. Kill somebody with it. Yeah, I suppose. There I, you go. I suppose all that stuff is good stuff to be doing. Yeah. T- Teamer Sabretooth, good. Dockside, good. Jolene, butt plunder, butt 22 point butt punch. She's fine. Yeah, I, I would let say Becky good, Lynch but... butt punch me. Yeah, me too, probably. You probably would, eh? Yeah. Moving along. Sure. Cammy's Obscura Oculus is a cephalid rogue, 2-4 for Esper and 1. <gasps> Whenever you attack, target attacking creature can't be blocked this turn. It connives. Then choose another attacking creature with lesser power. That creature gains double strike until end of turn. Oh, this is Obscura. That's what this family's name is. I remembered that. Sure. And the Naya one, Cabaretti. Let's see, we're getting there. We are learning. Naya just... and uh, and Esper. Yes, those of us Naya that and just Esper. Want to talk about magic stuff? Cabaretti and Obscura. The Obscura thing. We'll talk about it tomorrow on the review. Feels like another kind of 1920s franchise that's popular right now that um, some people have an issue with. So I won't talk too much about it tomorrow. But uh, is this is this good? Target attacking creature becomes blocked. Is something sacrificed. Do you play a lot of attacky attacky Esper decks? Do you, is that a, is that a deck that lots of people? play? I think that this is not going to be a very popular commander. No. <laughs> okay, okay. It's not a terrible card. It's just it's fucking Connives. fine. Then choose another attacking creature with lesser power. That creature gains double strike. Do you just like is this the unblockable dot? Do no because it gives them unblockable. Do you, is this yeah. an infect deck? It could be if if it had green. Well, it doesn't there's, though. There's blue guys with infect and black guys with infect. There's a white guy with infect too. Hey, yeah, but I mean that doesn't make. And it. it's a cat. Put it in the Cabaretti deck. <laughs> Naya, Naya, deck. Naya deck. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's fine. It gives some double strike. It gives some unblockable. It doesn't give it to both creatures, and the double strike thing doesn't target, so you can get through greaves and stuff. Ooh, but that's the really. Yeah. Yeah, if it doesn't target, you can get through Greaves. Then choose another yep, just, attacking creature with lesser power. Oh, yeah, it doesn't target. Just like Clone. Neat. Moving on. Sure. Cat Bard Druid, Naya and One. Oh, three, man. 3-3, three, <laughs> Kit Canto Mayhem Diva. <laughs> I like that name a lot. That's a wrestler name if I've ever heard one. <coughs> comes into play, oh. you get a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. So she comes into play, you get an additional dude. At the beginning of combat on each play, each Player's turn, you may tap two untapped creatures you control. When you do, target creature that player controls gets plus two, plus two, trample, and is goaded. Ooh, so tap two dudes, goad their thing. That means it has to attack, can't attack us if able. Right. This is the face commander for the Cabaretti Naya deck. It's a stupid choice. It should be that other guy. Yes. The best thing about this card is when I first read it, I thought it said Cat Bird Dog. <laughs> but it's Cat Bard Druid. Yes. Like, oh, damn, so close. We're Missed so opportunity. Just about there, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is not the one that I would play out of, I'll say out of the box, like the other two come in the box, but they don't. Yeah. I think that, man, I think Jetmere should have came at the front of that 
yes, that deck. Absolutely. Right? And this is like the one I'm going to have to play until my jet mirror comes in the mail, which will be fast because I ordered from FusionGamingOnline.com, mm -hmm. your source for all your quick shipping. If you live close to them like we do. Yes. It's, it's average speed everywhere else. You're not going to get it slower than otherwise, but we live really close, so we get it real fast. I did get one in one day one time. Wow. Yeah. Like, ordered in the morning, shipping notice before lunch, next day. Bang. Wow. wow we. Yeah. That's pretty good. Let's fly here because, look, there's lots of crappy Cro ones. Cross Defense Contractor. This is Bant, I think. Yes. Bant and one for a cat advisor. Advisor and cat. Brian likes this one. 2-4 at the beginning of your upkeep. Put a shield counter on target creature you control. Uh, or wait, sorry, sorry. Target creature your opponent controls. Whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control, tap that creature and goad it. It gets trampled until your next turn. That's pretty cool. You pick their biggest thing and you goad it. Yeah. And it can't die. Yeah. So they just keep punching people in the mouth with their biggest thing. Yeah. That, Neat. That is actually a really cool advisor commander. Can you imagine? I can't get attacked because I'm just going to proliferate all those shield counters and other counters I'm putting on your guy. And I'm just going to, you know, casually play a couple Grand Arbiter type effects because he's an advisor <laughs> and I'm in the stacks colors. Yeah. Hey, that's a good one. You get there. I like this one. Lagrella the Magpie is also whatever thing that is. Two, I don't know three. what Bant is. Human Soldier. When Lagrella the Magpie comes into play, exile any number of other target creatures controlled by different players until she leaves play. When an exiled card enters the battlefield under your control this way, put two plus one plus one counters on it. The Brokers, which sounds like an occupation more than a name. Yeah, so does Riveters. So we're going to yeah. we're just going to call them Bant and <laughs> yeah. move on because that the names of these families are stupid. Oh man, you got me there. This you one did. is this one is worded very strangely. You get one creature from each player and she can get bigger when you play one of them. This is um like um Grasp of Fate, right? Or yeah. kind of like Oblivion Ring. But if you can blink it a bunch of times and keep blinking your own guys in and out, you can pump your whole team. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Sure. Lord Xander the Collector. This oh, is the man. one everybody's everybody all... Everybody fucking hates this guy. Hey? I mean, as they... I'm going to say as they should, but we'll see what he does. So it's Grixis and four for a 6-6 six, six vampire demon noble. When he comes into play, target opponent discards half their cards in their hand routed down. Ooh. Whenever he attacks, defending player mills half their library rounded down. Ooh. Whenever he dies, target opponent sacks half their permanents, non-land permanents, rounded down. Ooh. So this is another one of those, like... Jeepers creepers. Just, I, I want to say it's a griefer card, but I mean, lots of people are excited about this, but it's probably going to fall into the same kind of category that Turgrid or Toxrail or a lot of those kind of commanders fall in where they're going to have just a shit reputation and they're going to deserve it. They're going to deserve it because it's going to be the person like like you see on the big Facebook groups. Oh, my playgroup always targets me, so I want to make the most nasty deck to play against. Give me all your Lord Xander stacks and combo includes. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to be. oh, my, I always build the, build the worst deck, so I have to build the hardest thing to play against. Give me all your Lord Xander. Like, fuck off. Yeah. Don't play this card. Yeah, it's moving along. It, like, it, it costs seven. I'm not worried about it destroying the format no. because at this point, nothing can break Commander. It's like a glacier moving down the fucking mountain. It is yeah. going to destroy everything. And one Lord Xander global warming thing isn't going to destroy the glacier. Yeah. I'm not worried about it. It costs seven. People are just going to hold removal when they see it in your command zone. It isn't going to be the, the boogeyman that people say it is. Yeah. It's not going to be the powerful deck that you think it is if you're going to build it. And if you play it, most likely... Unless you know a lot about Commander, Rule Zero, playing controller stacks, you're probably not going to have a very fun time playing it yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like like if you if you were just somebody, like I taught somebody how to play Magic like yesterday, and I was like, here's Brando's Turgrid deck. It's good. <laughs> that person, not going to have a fun time because no. they're just going to get dink stomped. Yeah. Right? And that's what's going to happen this with This is Zander. the same thing. So yeah. I would advise people, maybe just don't even play this unless you have a very developed uh, understanding of the game. Meta and or playgroup. Yes. Solid, solid. Public service announcement. Put the stamp on it. Mari the Killing Quill is a 3-2 vampire ass assassin for black black one. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, exile it with a hit counter on yep. it. 
Assassins, mercenaries, and rogues you control have death, touch, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you may remove a hit counter from a card that player owns in exile. If you do, draw a card and create two treasure tokens. I actually like this one. I actually like this one in Atrata the Silencer decks because you just play this, sacrifice a couple bros to give to give uh, <laughs> them hit counters. You hit them with unblockable Atrata one time, they lose the game. <laughs> <laughs> this goes straight into a Trata Dex. That's yeah. easy. And it's kind of neat that it's like an assassin slash mercenary slash rogue tribal commander that's actually pretty good. Yeah. So neat. I, yeah. I appreciate this card exists. I'm super happy as I read that bottom paragraph. I thought it was going to be remove that hit counter and you can play your opponent's cards. And I thought, well, this is just Gaunty. Yeah. But it's treasure, which makes it feel more like it fits into this set. It's way easier to play on VEDH. You're not stealing somebody else's cards. You still have Gaunty to do that. And uh, and it works with Atrata. And Atrata's an assassin, so you could do assassin tribal. There you go. Get them royal assassins from Alpha in there. Ooh. If you've got a cool $1,000 <laughs> or whatever they cost. Let's talk about Mr. Oreo the Boulder. Jund 1, 2 4, Rhino Warrior. Whenever you attack, double creatures, double target creatures' power until end of turn. He's Xenagos. He is Xenagos, and Xenagos fits in. Multiple combat steps fit in, so you can double your whole team or keep doubling the same guy. Yeah. You can fit in Berserk and all the red double target creatures power things. You can play Hatred. You could play fucking Hatred. And then you could play Fling. Yeah. Yes, you could play Fling. And what's the other one? Fling and... Soul's Fire. Flomp? Uh, no. Thump? Thud? Thud. I think it's Thud. <laughs> Thwomp? <laughs> That should be a card. It's probably trademarked, though. That's that. That's what that card does. I would play... I mean, if you play Xenagos and you really want black in that deck, there you go. Yes, I think if you if you put black in Xenagos, you get a lot faster because it's not like, oh, black makes me dealing 40 wave... No, infect. Yeah. <laughs> Double your 5 to 10 and win. That's how Glistener Elf works. Yes. And also Hatred. Yes. C infect. Yes. <laughs> yes. Let's talk about another John one. It's Grohl Hybrid, Rakdos Hybrid, Red One. For a Vaishino Warrior, 3-3 three, three with haste. Whenever a creature you control with haste attacks, you get a tapped treasure token. So your creatures get fast and your treasures get slow. <laughs> That's funny. I never thought of that. <laughs> uh it, it's Haste Tribal. I was just going to say, am I going to say Haste Tribal? Yes, you are. Am I going to say that? Yeah, it's a good thing they're reprinting Concordant Crossroads because now you can play Haste Tribal in your Treasure Tribal. I'm going to try this card in, I don't know which one, but I'm going to get one and I'm going to try it in a deck and I'll get in, back to you. As in the 99? Or not. Yep. Are you going to play Vashino Tribal and just play all cards from like Urza Saga? <laughs> oh my God. No, I used to play all the Vashinos in Norin for more ETBs and it's just a miserable exercise. Because so no, I'm not going to do that. Because they bounce them. They got haste, but they bounce themselves. Yeah. Right? It's because they like dive under the sand or whatever. Yeah. That's kind of fun. It's kind of neat, but uh, that's what the. It's haste tribal. If you want to play haste tribal. What do you think about the tap treasure clause there? Do you think that's a good like throttle? Yeah, well, that's probably a, that's probably good, right? It's an intense throttle. Well, I mean, you just have to look at what was the dragon from last year's commander decks, Clouth or whatever. Whenever he attacked, you got mana equal to the total power of creatures you attacked with, or great knobbon, no, and just fucking win. This is kind of well, like that, did that, the, right? That's, you have to do damage to do that. But it, oh, the, the point is, is this is slowed down. It's a balanced card. It's fine. I'll put it in the 99. I'll get back to you. Do, I, do you think that uh, we're going to see more tapped treasure things? Do, what if Dockside had tapped treasure claws? Do you think it would be like the Boogeyman? No. Everybody, no. No? No. I don't think it because would. Because it would take a turn. That's right. If you bounced it, you couldn't, like, infinite times, you'd have infinite treasures. But they'd For your all next be, turn. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, somebody like, just wrecks you and then... You're, but you've been I, I like that tap treasure thing. I think that they should do that more because it lets them do the powerful thing that they want to do, obviously, with treasure. Mm -hmm. But it, it well, throttles it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oscar Rubbish Reclaimer is a 3-3 three, three human wizard for black, black, red? Black, blue, three. This spell costs one less to cast for each different mana among cards in your graveyard. Whenever you discard a non-land card, you may cast it from your graveyard. This is your loot... Slash rummage slash, what's the new one, the one that makes the puts plus one plus one connive on connive tribal deck. I want to play this with a free discard outlet that lets me draw a card, so I can just cycle my deck, 
and only play zero drops. <laughs> There's got to be a deck. There's got to be a deck. We only play zero drops. You can cast them from your graveyard for free. Maybe you storm. Maybe you have some fiddly combo. But there's got to be something there, right? Probably. But that's... Yeah, you heard of Turgrid? Yeah, I'm going to discard my damn self. Turgrid, you're not getting any of my stuff. Not because I'm going to kill it, because I'm going to discard my own shit. Well, I'd still get it. Oh, fuck, I'd you get, would. Yeah, Dang I'd it. All, I'd get all of it. Are you kidding me? Dang. i get every single one of those things. How do you get it, though? Is it when I discard it so it's triggered? So if I discard stuff and cast it before you get it, I could still get it. Yes, you could get you could keep your instance, but all of your permanents would uh Ley line of anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That was a gooder. Par Parnese the subtle brush. A parness? I, I don't care. Yeah. Grix is, is too. Is it a, French or is it Italian? We don't. Uh, for a 4 4 vampire wizard, whenever you or a permanent you control become the target of a spell or an ability an opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless that opponent pays four life. Whenever you copy a spell up to one target opponent, may also copy that spell and they choose new targets for the copy. So you, you get ward f- four life on all your shit? Mm-hmm. That's good, right? That's pretty good. It's pretty good. And. We can make people copy stuff. That's pretty political if that's what you want to play. Maybe this is like Grix's group hug. Grix Great. hug. Great. Yeah. Another group hug. Hey, maybe. and she could be French. We could say Grixie. Grixie group yeah, hug. Grixie group hug. GGG. Yeah. Yeah, not just two Gs anymore for good games. Three Gs. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Hey, and do you remember that treasure tribal paintbrush tribal deck we did a while ago? Yeah. This could be the new commander. Now we get blue. Ooh. Good. Pretty good. Pierre the Pulverizer. I know oh, that's not oh. how you say it, but that's how I'm saying it. <laughs> so good. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> Is a Bant 3 3 Rhino Soldier. Whenever it comes into play, put a shield counter on target creature. Whenever it attacks, target creature you control gains trample and plus X plus X until X of turn where. Until end of turn, where X is the number of different kinds of counters among permanents you control. PV Pulverizer. Oh, yes. so good. Yes. So good. So Ugh. that's another different types of counter tribal. Yeah, it's another attack. You could play your Azoria's <sighs> elocutors to get elocution counters. You could play things that and get their night- advisors, nightmare counters, all that kind of. You can just jam it all into a deck so that you can Voltron one of your guys and Have swing in different and colored beads or something to recognize though, right? Yeah, do do the work up front to make it easy on people when you play this guy. Yeah, when you pulverize peepees. Make it easy on people. Yeah. Give them some of that topical cream for numbing. Fabian Boss's Confidant is a cat advisor, a cat visor, as if you will, and I will. 3 6 for Naya and 3. Creature tokens you control have haste. Ooh. She's professional looking, hey? Very much so. She's got yeah. like the, the flared pant on with the, the. Very trendy. The heel, yeah. yeah. That's, that's kind of nice. reminds me of like Kate Blanchett in that, in that new movie she's in with Bradley Cooper. I don't remember sure. what it's called. Has parlay at the beginning of combat on each turn on your turn. Each player reveals the top card of their library for each land card revealed this way. You get a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. Then creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn for each non-land card revealed this way. Then each player draws a card. Do not care. Creature tokens have haste. Yes. Yes, that's why you play that. Moving on. Moving along. Queza Augur of Agonies is an Esper... Cephalid Advisor, 3-4. When you draw a card, target opponent loses a life and you gain a life. I might build this guy. They're, that. This is Nekuzar, but in Esper. Yeah. Obscura. Shut up. Speaks, <laughs> th- that card speaks for itself, right? Like Yeah, you could play wheels. You could play double spells. You could play whenever you, like, infinite mana, draw a card, your whole opponent's lose. Like, yeah. You can't, you can't actually kill all of your opponents. Like, you need to... Maybe Eldrazi shuffle your library back in or Elixir it back in. Yeah. Elixir Mortality it back in. And then draw again. Then you just, oh, yeah. yeah. This is a powerful card. This is Nekuzar. And you can play like Underworld Dreams and stuff. Just like Nek. Like this is Nekuzar with white instead yeah. of red. Rafine, Scheming Seer, is another Esper commander. One force, Sphinx Demon, Flying Ward 1. Whenever you attack, target attacking creature connives X, where X is the number of attacking creatures. Why are they making Esper the attacky attack color in this set? I don't know. Like, did they just think that white, blue, black needed to attack more? Yes. They should. They should. I think everybody in Commander should attack more. I do too. Get your chip in. Doesn't mean they're going to do it. No, nobody ever attacks. And they're either like, no, I don't want to attack. I don't want to make enemies. Or, oh, I forgot. Yeah. Get your shit together. Connive X is good, isn't it? 
Yeah. Where mm -hmm. what is what is X? Draw X, discard X, and then for each non land card you could you discarded, you get a plus one plus one counter on the creature with connive. But what is what is the X? Is number of attacking creatures. Number of attacking creatures. Oh, so if you attacked with like twenty dudes, you could draw and discard twenty. Yeah. That's probably really good. Yeah. And then you just fill up your graveyard with twenty things. Of course, you have to have twenty creatures in Esper. Ooh. Ooh yeah. So you know. Ooh, yeah. Well, you just that. play that guy with all the zero drops I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get your ornithopters, kids. Uh, Rigo, Streetwise Mentor, is a 2-2 cat citizen for Azorius Hybrid, Celestia Hybrid White. Comes into play with a shield counter on it whenever you attack a player or planeswalker with one or more creatures with power one or less draw card. It's pretty good. It's not too bad. That's the one that you play like the Umazawa that you, little guys can't be blocked. Yeah. And stalking assassin in, you just draw, draw, draw. Well, you draw, you draw one card. Well, I mean, but if you if you attack with all these different guys, no, one you, or more. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is sucky. Yes, you draw one card. It, this fuck this guy, Rocco Cabaretti Caterer, the blatant oversight from last oh week. Oh my god, he was right. I can't believe we did this. Go back and listen to last week's show, Rocco Combo. Pretty we'll, cool, we'll cool deck. Tell you all about Rocco. And you can bounce Rocco and get all your combo pieces, bang, 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 like mm. Bob's your uncle. That's right. And he actually is Brando's uncle, Robert. I have two of them. Two. Bob and Bob are your uncle. No. The oversight, we didn't play Tamanoa Seeker <laughs> Commander. <laughs> Uh, I we, had a Tamanoa 16-4 deck. We suck. And Brando's got an Earthquake Tribal deck. Yeah. Tamanoa is the only creature I wish is legendary that isn't legendary. Damn it. Cole's notes. Whenever you deal non-combat damage, gain that much life. Ooh. Right? That's a Tamanoa. Yeah, that's right. Oh, man. So you yeah. just Earthquake everybody and every creature, and you gain like 100 life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, and fools be fucking getting ether flux left, right, and center. Earthquake for five. Everything's dead. Everybody's fucking ticking five. I'm at 50, 100 life. 50, 100. That's a new number. That's right. And everybody's dead. Tamino? <laughs> that's what he says. Ah. Next up, Cyrix, Carrier of the Flame. This is your Phoenix Tribal. Everybody's been just begging for what Phoenix Tribal. What is this card even doing in the set? Black, red, two, three, three, Phoenix, flying haste. At the beginning of each end step, if a creature left your graveyard this turn, target Phoenix you control deals damage equal to its power to any target. Whenever another Phoenix you control dies, you may cast Steric's Carrier of the Flame from your graveyard. I, I don't like Phoenixes. I never have. I never will. I still don't. If you do, I'm happy that you have a commander for the Phoenix tribal deck. You've always wanted. I thought for a couple minutes about turning Lord of Tressorhorn into Phoenix Tribal because when, like, you can get Phoenixes back, right? So you right. sack them to Tressorhorn, you can get them back. And I thought, hey, this could go in there B back when I was thinking about it, like, uh, last year. Mm -hmm. Now, I cut the only Phoenix that was in there, and now this is in this set, and I'm like, what is this doing? Why is this here? I don't know. There you go. There it is. We're moving on to the beat down, the beat down bullies. It's the beam town bullies. Yeah. Jund one for a four four ogre devil warrior vigilance haste tap target opponents target opponent whose turn it is puts target non legendary creature card from our graveyard into play under their control it gains haste goad it at the beginning of the ne next end step exile it so we give them our shit and they attack with it eater of days <laughs> skip two turns bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Leveler, ruined. Oh, dude! I those two cards go hand in hand. Me and uh, 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 Ken from Stacked EDH. He uh -huh. just mentioned Leveler and this, and I was like, whenever somebody mentions Leveler, I always mention Eater of Days because it's the, the, they go hand in hand in this deck. Yeah, is it still goaded? Because they skip their next two turns, it would still be goaded because it's their next combat phase, right? It well, would still be goaded. Of course. Well, it has haste and it well, it just goes till the end of the turn that they're on. So you would get the Eater of Days, get they'd get wrecked, they'd until, go to the next combat. Until our next turn is when it's goaded, right? No, it's go goad is just till end of turn, I think. No, because it happens on oh, their oh, turn. Oh, yeah, it's the end of... No, who cares? What does it matter? They have to sacrifice the creature at the end of the thing anyway. But they missed two turns. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to attack somebody else with the Eater of Days. Yeah, or, when they get a turn. <laughs> well, they well they have that turn still because it's their turn. You have to do this oh, on their yeah, turn. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Fuck them. 
<laughs> Make him miss their next two. <laughs> then we get him back. We can do a seedborn muse. This guy on taps. Next opponent. Yeah, you miss turns two. <laughs> the next opponent miss two turns. Because you exile the creature though. Oh no. Yeah, it doesn't work. Do we play? How do we get it back? Rift sweeper. Yes, rift sweeper. Is that put it into your graveyard? No, it puts it into your uh, library. Dang it. Yes, yeah, so you gotta find it again. Uh, but you know. Vampiric Tutor. There, that's why tutors exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. This is the one and only commander where Gamble is just the best tutor because you can tutor the thing and immediately just oh, yeah. give it to some other Last player. card in your hand, Gamble. Gamble? Eater, Eater of Days. days. <laughs> or Phyrexian Dreadnought. That would work. Oh, they would just sack the Dreadnought, though. Yeah. That's how Dreadnought works. Dang it. Yeah. Yeah, that's Eater of Days and Leveler are your two real options there. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. Tivet Seller of Secrets is another Sphinx. It's a rogue. It's a 6-6 six, six for Esper and 3, Flying Ward 3, Council's Dilemma. Whenever it comes into play or deals combat damage to a player, starting with you, each player votes for evidence or bribery. For each evidence vote, investigate. For each bribery vote, get a treasure token. And you can vote twice whenever you vote. This is Will of the Council and Council's Dilemma Tribal. I said it. Yes, and I mean, you don't even need to really do that because you can just swing in and you can either investigate twice, get two treasures, and then you happen to get more stuff. Or because you're in blink colors, you could just blink this guy and always vote twice for yourself to get all the treasures, yeah. thereby maybe going infinite. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good guy. Cost six, but it's pretty good. And Sphinx Tribal. Shout out to Dana Roach. People love Sphinxes, especially yeah. Dana Roach. Yeah. Sphinxes and mana lith, right? That's what he likes. Yes. That's what Dana Roach yes. likes. To lose Clever Conductor is a 3-1 human rogue for Azorius hybrid, Demir hybrid blue. Yep. When it comes into play, you connive. We've already told you what that is. Whenever you discard one or more cards, exile them from your graveyard. When she eats shit, put cards exiled with her into their owner's hand. Hey. So if you go infinite, <laughs> <laughs> infinite blink. Uh, you know what I hear to lose and I just hear I just see the little kitten from Aristocats. Sure. The Disney movie? Never seen it. Oh. Man. No. Did you have a childhood? No. Nope. Just you were born a man. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't know it was obscure until I was already You're a man. man. <laughs> it's only Esper, that's all it is. That's right. So uh, th th this one doesn't seem it's... I he, here's the thing though. Remember at the top of the show I mentioned base level? Or like, if we don't think about it, we just read the card. Yeah. It's like, oh, not very good. But probably... There's probably a way of breaking this all the way open and just doing all sorts of yeah. degenerate shit. But yeah. And you and can a, do that. I'm I'm making the joke. Like, if you can go infinite, right? That's but, the joke. Because... But if you can go infinite. Almost everything is like that, right? Yeah. If you can go infinite with fucking anything and uh, a perforos, <laughs> you're going to yeah. win, <laughs> right? There, there you go. <laughs> anyway. Right. Now, we're going to skip two and we're going to go to Zio... Aorta the Incinerator. Aorta. Is a Demon <laughs> Dragon 6-6 six, six for Jund 3 with flying. At the beginning of your end step, you can sack a dude. If you do, Zeatora the Incinerator deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target, and you create three treasure tokens. I'm uh, going to play this in Shitter Gang Brothers. Like, Shitter Gang Brothers. This is kind of like, this is another fling tribal type thing, right? This guy and, and the other rhino where you double power, and yeah. then you fling with Xenagos and stuff? Yeah. This guy is like fling in the command zone. Yeah, that's pretty good. Make dudes big and I smash wish it with them. If this was red and white and another color, I would consider switching Brian Stout Arm to this. Oh dang! Yeah. Get them trash, baby. But yeah. it's it's fine. I don't know. I think this is cool. And you yeah, can... it's a demon and a dragon, so people are gonna like that. They're gonna put it in their. I'm sure that out there there are demon dragon decks. I'm sure they exist. Of course, there is demon decks and dragon decks, and mm -hmm. now you have access to all Jund colors for that deck. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about Vazzy Keen Vazzy Keen Negotiator. Three three Shush. human advisor. Oh well. In zero of the advisor colors. With haste for Jund to tap. Target opponent creates X treasure tokens where X is the number of treasure tokens that we created this turn. Okay, so we gotta have treasures that we made this turn to give treasures away. Whenever an opponent casts a spell or activates an ability, if mana from a treasure was spent to cast or activate it, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature and draw a card. Uh, we, our guys get big and we draw cards. That is going to happen more than you think. Yes. This card, in all ways I slice it, is just 
dirtily and mm. underwhelming. Yeah. I don't like this one. I don't either. It's not going to do anything and somebody's going to take five or six minutes or 10 minutes to do their turn and I'm just going to sit there, drink beer, chat with other players, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah, which is great. But they're not going to further the game in any way, shape, or form and they're just going to draw cards until they draw into some mundane thing like an Exanguinate or a Torment of Hailfire with their 30 treasure tokens and that's how the game is going to end. It's not going to feel fulfilling. Yeah. I don't like this one. Don't either. It's dirtily. It feels like it should be Esper, and it feels like it should be tapping and untapping artifacts to put plus one counters and and d- fucking st- stupid dirtily shit. Ah. I don't like this one. I like it when Ryan doesn't like stuff because it makes now I know how he feels all the time. <laughs> and empathy is important. There's yes. another life lesson for you. Oh. Last card. Then we're gonna go. We're sorry we went over time, Joe. Urabrask, heretic creator. Pre- this is the one I like the most. I'm going to put it in like two decks if I can find two of them. It's a 4-4 four, four for red, red, three with haste. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. You can play it this turn. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, the next time they would draw a card, they exile the top card of their library. Instead, they can play it this turn. So you, instead of drawing a card on your turn, you oh. chaos draw instead. Oh. And if you can't play it, then you just don't draw cards. That's right. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, the next time. Okay, so it, it only happens on their first draw per Yes. Turn. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, the next time they would draw a card. So yeah. it only refers to the opponent whose turn it is. Yes. So if, if you have that card and... Then it's like player three's turn. I'm player two. Yeah. I draw a card on player three's turn. I can still draw that card. Yes. But on my turn, I don't draw my card per turn. I, I chaos draw it. That's right. This, I understand what they did. You get a thing, I get the opposite thing. Yes. But it doesn't feel like that. All the Praetors do that. Yeah. But this one doesn't feel like it's doing the same thing. <laughs> Fucking red, hey? I know. Leave it to red. And that's why I like it the most. And I think that it's cool that it it does something that's fairly controlly and fairly throat grabby but not so hard that everybody's gonna just oh that's so broken i actually think that original urabrask is actually stronger in virtually every way wow but i mean well not if you play a mono red control stacks light deck this guy is this guy could be miserable who would ever play a deck like that ryan this guy could be miserable not me for sure because he turns off draw yeah. I'm very excited. I this don't is, want to play against that deck. I like her a lot. And <sighs> at the front of a deck, he'd probably be miserable. In the decks I'm going to play him in, he's probably going to be just fine. And yes. nobody's ever going to worry yes. about him ever. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't want to say that don't build this guy because he's like Turgrid. He doesn't let you play magic. But if you build the deck that I described with yeah. every stacks piece that you can and the Blood Moons and the yeah. Strangleholds and the... Oh, yeah. And, oh, and yeah. then your win condition is Sulfuric Vortex. Yeah. <laughs> and it takes like fucking 900 years to do a game because nobody yeah. can draw, nobody can play stuff, nobody can deal damage to anybody except for Sulfuric Vortex. Yeah. 20 turn clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's the set. What do you think? Oh, I'm excited for a ton of these legends. I think a ton of them got a lot of play. There's a bunch that are going into 99s of my deck and yours, it mm-hmm. sounds. Yep. I love, and this is in the show notes, I love that I don't remember what a whole bunch of them do. Yeah. We shouldn't know what every single card and every staple and every commander does. It takes away the majesty, the mystique, the mystery, the intrigue of the game when you know everything about it. There's so many legends and so many sets and I'm so burnt out and I haven't even updated decks from Ikoria. Then don't. Yeah. We say it every review. Yeah, then don't. Then just don't and and be intrigued and and be mysterious. It's like going to a car show and lifting up the hoods of different people's motor like cars and And see, somebody's got a barbecue in there instead of an engine. Yeah, and seeing their different and unique car builds, automotive reference, you know I'm want to do. It's like cool. Every build is unique and everything is interesting and nothing is the same. And there are no staples other than like spend lots of money on car parts, exhaust, and, and fucking gas. <laughs> yeah. Right? Good. Give us more. Give us more. We will give them more, Ryan. Thank you very much to Fusion Gaming Online. They're your source for all your gaming needs, and they give us some stuff sometimes so that we can bring this show to you. Thank you for being here, and we're going to be back with the rest of the set on the next episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song! Hit our theme song!